Hello again, everybody. This is Jay once again, and in this Python video, I wanted to show you guys my favorite module, the OS module, which is something that we can import into our Python script that gives us the ability to interact with the underlying operating system. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so in order to use the OS module, I'm going to need to import that. So in order to import it, I'm just going to use the import keyword and then the name of the module that I want to import, which in this case is OS. And what this will allow us to do is go ahead and use the various functions within the OS module that we're importing here. So as I mentioned, the OS module allows us to interact with our underlying operating system. So I'm going to give you a quick example of that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute the print statement, but what I want to do is print the current working directory that I'm in in my terminal. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is os.get cwd which stands for current working directory, and that's a function, so I need the parentheses there, and then the closing parentheses for the print statement. So let's go ahead and save it and run it. And let's run it, let's see what it does. And as you can see, it simply prints my current working directory, which I could have easily done by just typing pwd on the command line here, but it went ahead and showed me what my current working directory is. So let's talk a little bit more about the OS module and why it's awesome. Now, as you just saw, when I wanted to see the current working directory on my Linux shell, I did pwd, which of course works for Linux. But if you're on Windows or something else, that might not work for you. So you notice here that I didn't actually have to do anything operating system specific. So if you're on Windows, for example, the command to get the current working directory is not going to be the same as the one that I executed on my Linux system. And the OS module actually takes care of that for you. It basically takes the complexity out of it because sometimes you need to do something with the underlying operating system, but you may not know what operating system the user is running. So in that case, you simply would use the OS module and it would take care of that for you. In this case, the method that I'm executing is actually get current working directory, get CWD, which, you know, when we executed the script, it simply showed us the current working directory, which we already know is my home directory. So no surprises there. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen. Now what I'm gonna have you guys do is do something we haven't done in a little while, and that is get into the Python shell. So what I'm gonna do is type Python 3 on my command line right here. And what I wanna actually show you is the help function for OS. I mentioned in a previous video that the help function is very useful when you want to know more about a particular object in Python. So what you can normally do is type help and, and in the parentheses type what you want help on and we want help on the OS module. It's not gonna work, but the syntax is correct. And of course it fails because we don't have an OS module. So actually that leads into something I wanted to explain, which is import works on the Python shell as well. Actually anything you do in a script you can do in the Python shell right here, but we need to import OS in order to be able to use it because if we don't import it, since it's not built in, Python can't use it. So I can go ahead and import OS the same as we did in our script. I press enter and it doesn't say anything, but it's successful, it did work. And to prove that I can recall the help that I tried to do here on the OS module. And you can see that now it actually works. Now that we've imported it, we can actually get help on it. And the text is really large here, but it you know, kind of wraps. But you could just basically scroll here and you can see some of the things that the OS module allows you to do. Uh, for example, one of the things you'll see in here as well, uh, there's a lot of information, but one of the things it allows you to do is move a file. So I could basically move a file from one name to another. Let's go ahead and see an example of that. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of the Python shell here and then return to our script. So here we have get current working directory. I may as well leave that. But what we want to do is actually rename a file just to show you that this module can interact with your underlying operating system, as I mentioned. So what I want to use is os.rename. And what I'm going to do is in the parentheses, I'm going to type the original file name and then the new file name. So I'm just going to do, uh, let's just see, first, I'll just call it first.txt. And then I need to do a comma and a space. And then in quotes again, I'm going to do second.txt. 
Now I'm not going to execute this just yet. I am going to save the file, but we don't actually have a file named first.txt. So I'll go ahead and minimize this, and I'm going to go ahead and create that file. Touch first.txt. We can see that the file is actually there. And let's go ahead and run our script. Now, all it did really is just print the current working directory, but we did tell it to rename a file, so did it do it? Well, let's find out. And we can see that it actually did. The first.txt file is no longer there, and of course, now we have second.txt. So if I was to run that again, what would happen? And we get a traceback file, not found error. So this is something we're going to get into very shortly in one of the videos that's coming up here pretty soon. Again, how to deal with managing errors. But as expected, the OS module is not able to rename first.txt because we've already run the script and it's already named it to uh, second.txt. So now that it's done that, the original file name is no longer found, so we'll get an error message. All right, so I went ahead and cleared out most of the program at this point. I left only the import section of it. And I want to show you something else cool about OS. We can actually run a command from the underlying operating system directly from our script. How do we do that? Well, we actually use os.system to accomplish that. And inside the parentheses and then inside the quotes, we can actually type a command. So in this case, I'm just going to type the ls command. And let's just go ahead and run it and see if that works. And it does. I executed that script and it basically gave me a list of files that are in my current working directory. So that is pretty cool. All right, guys, so I went ahead and rewrote this program. And I wanted to basically add some formatting here just to show you some of the ways in which the OS module can be useful. And nothing new at this point. I've already done the uh, get current working directory. You already know what that does. You already know what os.system does. It's, in this case, it's running the ls command. But what I did was I just added some print statements here to format this a little bit better, just to show you that you can incorporate OS modules functions into an existing program to get information from the system and present it in a way that is useful to the user. I'll go ahead and save the file. Let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. So first of all, it says your current working directory is, and it gives me that directory. And then it says the contents of this directory are, and then it gives me, of course, the same contents. So what I did here is I just added a couple of new line characters here to basically force it to, uh, you know, put a couple blank lines in between so not everything is jumbled all together. But essentially, it's just printing the statement, your current working directory is, and then it's just going to go ahead and print the contents of os.get current working directory, which is going to evaluate to whatever your current working directory is on your file system. And then it's going to say, you know, print the contents of this directory are, and then it's going to go ahead and print the contents. So uh, you can see here that the OS module actually is pretty useful. And although this example is really simple, we're actually getting into the main point of the series, which is system administration, something that I've been looking forward to for quite some time. So there you go, guys. That was the OS module. Now, there's so much more to this great module that we can get into. And I certainly would love to cover everything. But as you can see from the help module, when we went through the contents of the OS module in help, you saw that there's actually quite a bit to it. It's a very big module that can do all sorts of different things on your file system. And it's something that we're going to be using throughout the rest of the series. This is not the last time that you'll see it for sure. So go ahead and experiment with it, guys. Just be very careful. You don't use it to remove something that you'd rather keep. But for the most part, it's definitely something that you'll want to learn. Now from here, the um, complexity of these tutorials is going to start to increase. So definitely make sure you have a handle on everything that we've gone over so far, that you've had a chance to practice all of those concepts. And from here, we are going to take our knowledge even further and learn some awesome new Python skills. So go ahead and stay tuned. I should have the next video in this series uploaded very soon. 
Thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I really appreciate it. And if you want to help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the show notes below this video, where I have a link to my Patreon page, as well as an Amazon store, where I have a listing of hardware that I've personally tested myself to be compatible with Linux. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. And I look forward to making more videos for you guys very soon. Thanks again.